this technical service bulletin actually is talking about zinc levels, zinc and phosphorus levels in various anzole oils. And you would ask yourself, well, why are they really putting out such an emphasis on this? So let me take just a minute, maybe with the help of Ricky on a couple things as a real mechanic, but I'm going to give you a quick burst on what it is to have the tappet valves and cam system that they talk about that this is important for. If you understand these just a little bit, how they work, then you'll understand why the zinc and phosphorus becomes an issue. Okay. Now, let's just go back to a real basic for a minute about in this four-stroke engine, what happens. Everybody understands that it's called a four-stroke or four-cycle engine because you have what's called an intake stroke where there's a valve that opens <coughs> on the top of the engine. Let me explain that just for a minute in sort of a funny way that you might can grasp. I'm doing this for you, Judy. Okay, yes, imagine is. that you have a mayonnaise jar and you cut the bottom out of it and on the top you have a special lid. And this lid on the top you have has two holes you cut in. Okay, so you got a mayonnaise jar, lid on the top, the bottom's cut out, right? Now I take myself another can, if you will, like a coffee can that'll slide up into the mayonnaise jar. It'll slide up and it'll go down, okay? Now, we're going to say there's a connecting rod that hooks to the bottom of that coffee can and it goes down to what's called a crankshaft. But I don't care about that right now. I want you to understand these valves. So, on the intake stroke, I take the coffee can and I pull it down in the mayonnaise jar and it starts to create a vacuum because it's nice and sealed. I can't hardly pull it down. Well, I open what's called a valve at the top on one of those holes. I open the hole and now it's sucking in stuff from outside. Believe it or not, when it sucks that in, I'm going to put air and fuel mixture in what is sucked in. That's called the intake. It's sucking it down in, right? Now I suck in a volume of it, and the crank connector rod comes around on the uh, crank shaft, I can say that, and it starts pushing the can back up. Well, I don't want it to go back out the hole that I just had open, so I close that valve, and now I'm compressing. This is called the compression stroke. I'm pushing that volume up and it can't get out of the mayonnaise jar and we're just compressing it in there. I get it right compressed to the maximum amount that it can stand. I have a spark plug sitting in the side, sets off the spark, boom, I've now got expansion of this explosion, if you will, going on here. This gas mixture is, is burning rapidly, increasing pressure. This is called the power stroke. Down goes the piston, the coffee can, and it's hooked to the crankcase, so through the connector rod it's applying power to the, to the crankshaft. Okay, now I've got power in that stroke, but the crankshaft starts to push it back up. Well, what am I going to do now? i got all this burnt fuel and mixture sitting inside my mayonnaise jar, right? Well, I take this other valve called the exhaust valve and open it and let this thing push up and it pushes all the exhaust out that hole. Okay, that's a four-stroke in a simplified way. But the two valves at the top here is what I wanted you to concentrate on. I got to figure out how to open and close these things at the right time. So how do I do that? I have another thing that I use called a camshaft. That thing is nothing but a long shaft with a bunch of high lobes on it. And as it turns around, those lobes would come around at a certain time, right? Well, they're going to be timed with this crankshaft turning down. So. What I do in these older fashioned engines like this is I take myself and put a rod, it's called a push rod, that rests on this camshaft. And as that load comes around, it lifts that rod up, right? And you go, well, that's pretty neat, but I want this one here to push down. So how am I going to do that? Well, I make a nice little post here and put a thing called a rocker arm on the top. I push up on this side, it pushes down on this side, opens the valve. That's called a rocker arm valve assembly with two push rods, okay? It goes down onto a camshaft where I have a thing called a lifter sitting on the camshaft to protect it from wear. That system is what is hard to lubricate more so than any other part in the engine when compared to modern engines that have a different thing called a roller cam which is much easier to lubricate and doesn't have the points of pressure that you have in these push rods and rocker arms and tappets down here that are moving on the camshaft. So, remember we talked earlier, before we even started this recording, about a thing called boundary lubrication, where I can't maintain full fluid flow. Well, look at these two points of these rods sitting up here on this, this uh, 
rocker arm. I've got two points about the size of a, a pencil eraser sitting up in the sort of a pocket onto a rocker arm. That is a very hard place to lubricate. Then I come down this one connector rod, down to this camshaft, and it's got these solid steel lobes that are turning, sitting on a, on a, on a lifter, it's called the vice, with a push rod sitting in that. I've got to lubricate this face, and that can be turning four, five, six thousand RPM. And these things are different sides, so it's going like this. And to add to all of this, to keep these things in what I want, I put springs in here so that there's a, an opposition to pressure. And so what happens is the spring loading and the pressure actually feeds backwards through the system to ride down on the camshaft. And I've got to protect that. So to protect that, since I can't keep full fluid flow on it, I have to have additives in sufficient quantity to prevent wear on that camshaft and on the po uh, points on the rocker arms on these valves. So I need zinc and phosphorus to do that. I can't do that with just liquid oil. I have to have those additives. Along comes the Environmental Protection Agency and they demand that we lower zinc and phosphorus in automotive oils because they're afraid it's going to carry over and poison catalytic converters and ruin the catalytic converters. So I lower standard oils, let's say back 10 years ago, might have had at least a thousand parts per million of zinc and a thousand parts per million of phosphorus. Well, the new EPA limit is 800. And then our oils, historically, AMSO oils, ran around 1,200 for our standard oil. So we got a problem. We got a problem with the EPA. They're not going to let us maintain those levels that we want to to get the best anti-wear additive package in our oil. So along comes the allowance to make an oil which does not meet the SM or SN rating of the EPA of the API. Doesn't meet it. And we know it doesn't meet it because we call it by a different name. We have Z-Rod oil and racing oil and oils that we just flat out say no, they're no, they only meet the SL rating which didn't require that lower parts per million of zinc and phosphorus. And we market them and sell them that way because what we're saying is we recognize you shouldn't use that oil in a brand new 2010, 12, 13 car. But if you've got yourself a wonderful 1967 Mustang with a uh, 351 engine in it, or a, let's see, size of, I'm going to say Chevy here in a minute, or Ford. What was it? It was a 390. It was a 390. What's the small block? 351 Windsor. 351. 289. That's, I was going to say 283, and I knew that was a Chevy size. <laughs> but a 289, if you've got any of those engines, they all have what's called a tappet cam system. Jeeps up to 2007 have not changed the technology towards that. If you use the current oils of the Jeep below uh, 2007 to what, the 50s, you will destroy an engine 50,000 miles. Well, it will. It will wear it out. It will really wear that camshaft yeah. out in a hurry because they're just not designed to protect it. And here's, here's the thing about this. Yeah, um, if you look at the weight of oils that were used in those times also, you'll see a lot of 10W40 weight oil used. Yeah. There's hardly any 10W40 weight oil available in modern oils. You have to go look for them to find them. It's just not around. We're using AME in that thing now. Yeah, that's a good choice. So here's my point. When you look at these, you say, well, how do I know then if I'm talking to my customer, my customer says, I've got a, a you know, 1969 Pontiac GTO with a 389 engine in it, and I really want to protect it. It's my baby. How do I protect it? Well, here's the thing. You can protect it with a lot of our oils. Anzo made an oil called Z-Rod oil, which was designed for these engines. And in, I'm going to show on the board up here, John, if, you can, if it can be seen, okay? I don't know if you can see it or we'll have to put it in later. You walk around here. And the crazy Z rod's only good for 5,000 miles, right? Mm -hmm. Where the diesel's good forever as long as you take, keep track of it. Now, the first oils that we see in this picture, the Z rod oil, says that it has 1,440 parts per million zinc and 1,320 20. 20 of phosphorus. Those are high levels, guys, considering that most modern oils would run below 800. And let me tell you, 800 would be doing good because most of them realize this is expensive and they now have a reason to not put that extra money into that quart of oil. 
So 800 is a limit, but that don't mean they have to get to 800. They just can't exceed it. The property okay. thing says 800 and 600. Yeah, 800 and 600. Yeah, 800 for uh, the zinc and 600 for phosphorus, or the other way around, Tony? It says minimum phosphorus level of 800 and 600. Okay. Now, Z-Rod is one of our oils, but I had, if you look below that, you'll see some of our original amsoils here, and they're important to understand. 1040 and 2050, and the diesel oil, 1540 and 530, and they're almost just as high. We've got 12 to 1300 in each one of those categories. So here's the point. We always told people before that when the automotive oils were changing, if you didn't, couldn't find anything else for your motorcycle, buy a good heavy duty diesel oil. Because our 1540 was a heavy duty diesel oil. Now let me make an adjustment to that for modern times. That would be find a diesel oil that's CI4 plus rated, not one that's CJ4 rated. CJ4 rated diesel oils have a restriction of 800 parts per million for zinc and phosphorus. So you can't now use one of those diesel oils to make sure you have high zinc and phosphorus. You're going to have to go get a real oil that's rated for high zinc and phosphorus, either our 10W40, our 20W50, our 15W40, Z Rod oil, or our racing oil. So I was asked by an individual, should he run Z-Rod or should he run the racing oil? And the answer to that is quite, quite simple to me. Are you using the car to race or is it your hot rod that sits in the driveway and you drive it you know, to car clubs and stuff like that? If you're driving it around and, and that's what you're doing, use the Z-Rod. Because Anzo made the racing oil for real racing applications. It has a very high, what's called high temperature, high shear rating. And it's because it's expecting you to drive at 7,000 RPM, 8,000 RPM for 50 laps on the circle track that's a, you know, a three-eighth or half-mile track. That's what it was made for. Z-Rod's not made for that. Z-Rod's a good, solid, high-zinc phosphorus oil that's made for any hot rod you want to run. But if you truly are going to race the thing, go ahead and buy the racing oil. Why would you recommend the diesel oil? Uh, you could run the diesel oil, that's fine, but what I'm saying is since we see the diesel oil, even our new diesel oils, DME and DEO and those oils are CJ4 rated. And what I don't want to do is have somebody get confused and think they bought a diesel oil because they would have to go back to our CI4 plus rated diesel oils and we still sell, but guess what? Nobody else does. Okay, me, me. Yeah, the, all the other guys have gone to CJ4 rated diesel oils, which they say supersede CI4 plus. And they can be used there. They just don't have the zinc and phosphorus in them that the old CI4 plus did. So what I'm saying about diesel oils is yes, if you find a diesel oil that's CI4 plus rated, then you can use that in these high zinc applications. But do not use a CJ4 rated diesel oil expecting to get high zinc and phosphorus levels. It's not there. Now, in our oils, like I said, probably for safety down the road, it's either gonna be these uh, Z-Rod or the racing oils. I believe our original 20W50 and 10W40 will maintain the high zinc because they are not SM or SN rated, they are SL rated, meaning that Anvil has chosen not even to try to make those in a low phosphorus zinc uh, available family. They're just not going to do it. So you'd still be okay there. But in this point, you can find this technical service bulletin. Uh, Amsoil has it on their website. Uh, it's on my website, uh, thelooppage.com. So you can find it and look at it and Amsoil goes into detail on why they recommend these oils. So I want to point that out to you guys here in the meeting and to the people that will see this on YouTube is that you can get the oil and it's exactly what you want. Now, I will caution you, it's not the cheapest oil in the Amsoil line, okay? But it's what you're looking for, and that's what you need to find out. If you need to find the zinc and phosphorus level so that you're comfortable that that's the oil you want, Amsoil publishes them. I would challenge you, in most cases, to find any other oil company that you can find out what their zinc and phosphorus level is. Would you agree that the, the Z-Rod oil is only about a 5,000 mile oil, and that the 50 yes. 40 diesel go a lot further? Yeah, I would say if you're doing the car, if you're, if this is if an everyday driver. Yeah, if it's an everyday driving car, then select either the 1040 or the 1540 or the 2050 
standard AMSOILs, the original AMSOILs, and they will give you up to 15,000 miles or one year of service. Whereas if you go to the Z-Rod oil, it's designed by its own uh, classification to be a 5,000 miles or one year. And the racing oil has no recommendation. The thing on that is issue, you run it, you're in a race car, you evaluate it, you determine how long you think you want to run it because they don't know what you're doing with your race car. They, they will not be responsible for what you're doing with your race car. That's your race car. You want the best oil to protect it, it'll do it. How often you change it will be dependent upon how the oil holds up under your conditions. You can do that with used oil analysis. So I just wanted to point that out, let everybody know it's there and review that because I got some questions on this last week which were very good questions from an interested person trying to figure out what to buy for his application and I thought, you know, we really ought to review that because that's even a bigger issue now than it was before because most of the other oil companies have just about abandoned almost any oil except for what, there's some of them they call them high mileage oils. They're high mileage oils on some of those cars. They're in a 1040 weight. And if you notice, they don't carry an SM or an SN rating either because they have high zinc and phosphorus levels in them and they call that for a high mileage car. Well, here's my point on that. Maybe you wouldn't <coughs> need that extra protection on a high mileage if you'd started with the right oil at the beginning and not wore it out until you got an oil that had enough protection in it and called it high mileage. So anyway, that's just my pet peeve. So.